look at trade example number one. So here's the home page of market analyst. Let's open up our geometric trading workbook. And in the workbook, as we uh, looked at in the previous session, we have the videos here and our trading plan, our trade worksheet. And I've also set up a scan for our commodities, equities, Forex indices. So let's imagine it's May the 3rd, and we're going to do a scan. Let's imagine that we're scanning our equities. So we have our Gartley scan for equities here. We go over here, we can edit our scan for the Gartleys uh, for equities. And uh, the reference swing I'll have set to eight and our primary set to five. And we're gonna scan the S&P 500 for our data groups. And then we'll change this date here to May the 3rd. And I'm going to hit execute scan. So here's scanning. Boom. There you have it. We have a, uh, a result for Hartford Financial Services, HIG. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, a few videos ago in the section entitled TCG and TRG Part 2, I showed you a chart of HIG, and here it's showing up in our scan now. It wouldn't have shown up in the scan when I, I published that video. That video, I showed it to you. I even pointed out the, the time and date on my computer screen to be April the 29th, I believe it was. Yeah, April 29th. And if we did a scan on April 29th, nothing would have appeared here. Why? Because the Gartley pattern had not yet completed. There wasn't enough data on the screen for the software to find it. And so this is one of the limitations of scanning for Gartley patterns. So let's open that chart HIG and, and follow up with our analysis that we did back a few videos ago in the section TCG TRG part two. Remember that was the 29th. So let's open this and see what's happened since. So we'll zoom in here. Okay, so where is the 29th? The 29th is this bar right here. Let's put our FIB retracements on here. Price retracements, turn on the lock, the high to the low, drag those across. Okay, and I'll make a little notation here uh, identifying the specific bar where the 29th is. If we go over here to drawing, go to symbols, and um, we'll just put a little arrow here. Turn off the lock so we can move this. Okay, so that was the 29th, this bar right here, the inside bar is the 29th. And I said on that video that if it goes up and hits the 78.6% retracement, we wanted to be a seller. And I said the exact number, 29.59, and that's exactly what happened here. Let's open up this side panel here for the info panel. If you click that bar, you notice on the right-hand side, it says the high was 29.59. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the video of uh, the TCG TRG part two, and you'll see that I said that a f two days in advance. Anyways, so let's also just confirm this once again to review it. We put our price extensions on here as well from this low to here, down to here, drag that across. And so right there, there's our zone. We're confirming that we do indeed have a 78.6% uh, TRG. And uh, we'll go over here and turn off the levels that we don't need. And we also, because it's a TRG, let's put the volume on the chart down here too. 
Okay, so just reviewing, the idea was that uh, volume was declining as it was going higher, and so it did go down, uh, and then it had increased with this downward impulse, um, with the highest volume being down here. Um, and then we have a rally, and the volume goes down, and so the assumption is that this is a bearish TRG, and so far so good so let's turn on the training mode and what we'll do is we'll back up uh, some of the bars here we'll we'll get rid of some of the bars and then add them okay so we have our training mode on here uh, we just turn on this little button for training mode and we set it to one day at a time and we can hit the subtract button and that goes back and we remove some bars so there's the Friday, here's the Monday, and here's the Tuesday. If we back it up there to Monday, well, even for that matter, let's back it up to here to the, the Friday when I was talking about this. In the previous video, I said what we want to do is be a buyer at 29.59, and then I went ahead and said let's not put the stop on this at 31.08. We want to go a little bit higher than that. We don't want to go to 10 because everyone and their dog's going to use that number too. So let's use a different number, and I said to use 31.13. So let's use our. Let's go into tools, go to Beck, and go to the single and scale out. And we'll just uh, turn off the lock here. Let's just approximate. 29.59, click once. Go up here to around 31.13. Click twice. Drag that across. And that's, that's going to set your targets here. Let's just confirm that we got the right numbers. We go over here, control point, entry point, 29.59. And protective stop, 3113. Okay, so it's going to calculate our first and second targets for our multiple contract strategy. Uh, let's clear this up a little bit so we can see what's going on now. Now that we have the 786 and the extension, we can turn those off by simply uh, clicking the I here. And then you don't have to look at that anymore. Okay, so here's our trade setup. So we have, uh, we can also turn on the numbers specifically here. Let's say I want to show the price. Okay, so there's the numbers. Makes it easier. So why don't we fill out our worksheets now? We have the initial stop at 31.13. The second stop is going to be at 30.36. Our entry is at 29.59. The first target is at 28.82. Second target is at 28.05. So let's go over here to the trader worksheet and we'll fill this out. It was April 29th. And the objective was to enter on a TRG. So we can just bold that. TRG 786 bold. And uh, we go over here. The entry is either buy, sell on a one bar reversal for TCG618 or TCG486. But here, this is the important thing over here. We want to be a seller on the 786 um, for the TRG786. So we're going to do it right on the FIB number. Then it says the protective stop rules. What we're going to do is put the protective stop just beyond the X point of the pattern. So here's our orders. We're going to be a seller, bold, 300 shares of HIG, and the price was 29.59. And it's going to be on a limit order. So I'll highlight that. Okay. And um, 
we don't have a fill date yet, but we can fill in the rest here. So profit targets, 50% initial risk, we calculated that. Our first targets are going to be, first targets 2882, 2882. Second target, 100% initial risk is 2805. Our initial protective stop, 3113. Second target, or after the first target's hit, we're going to move it down to 30, 36. And since we're on daily, we know to change the time frame. If you hit the second target, go from daily to weekly and use a three bar trailing stop. Okay, so that's good. Let's move back to our chart here. And what we'll do is we'll add some bars. Go in the trending mode, add a bar, add another bar, boom. So this day here on the 3rd, we would have been filled at the high of the day, which is pretty cool, 29.59. And to be honest with you, this doesn't happen all the time. But uh, I was lucky enough to make that call right in the middle of this education. So that looks makes me look pretty good. Uh, 29.59 to the tick and it hit the first target. Uh, the same day. So we, we might as well just fill in that information on our trade worksheet before we uh, add some more bars. So let's go back here. Okay, so May 3rd was the fill date. So you would fill this in May 3rd. And the time we're not sure, but the price or prices 29.59 wasn't canceled so not applicable and we hit our first target so we exited at 2882 we can just take that number from right here so we go here 2882 PL. let's crack open our calculator here and Type in the price you got filled at, 29.59. Guess I should change that here. 29.59 minus what? 28.82. 28.82. And that gives us PL of 77 cents. 77 cents. Let's pretend our trade cost is. Uh, ten dollars commissions ten dollars so how much did we make on that well subtract the it was if you traded a hundred shares here uh, you made seventy seven dollars on that less your trade cost of ten dollars so make it sixty seven dollars okay good so that's where we're at now and we're hoping to get filled on the next target our stop now is at 28 oh uh, pardon me our stop now has moved down to 30 36 let's move back to the chart here so we've we moved the stop initially it was uh our our first order was to sell 300 shares at 29.59 put a protective buy stop at 31.13 and we bracketed we would have bracketed our initial fill here with an order down here one to buy back 100 shares at 2882 on a limit and to uh, buy on a stop 300 shares at 3113 but now we've gone down here we've been filled on this order here at 2882 and for that reason we move the stop down from 3113 down to 3036 okay so you're going to have a, a buy stop at 3036 on 200 shares now and you're going to have another order down here to buy 100 shares at 2805 so let's add some more bars here and see what happens okay so the next day at 2805 so let's go over here to our worksheet Second target, 2805. 
and so let's get out our calculator. It's pretty easy, actually. You can just double it times 2 equals, it should be 154, but we'll just double check it here. Uh, subtract 29.59, or, or that's the main, that, that's your fill price, 29.59. Subtract 28.05 minus 28.05, 154 like we thought. Okay, so 154, trade cost 10 bucks, $10. So instead of $154, you made $144, which is a FIB number. Okay, good. So now what do we do? Let's go back here. So what do we do with our orders? Now that we've hit the second target, now we cancel this order uh, for the buy stop at 3036. We cancel that, and now we put a buy on a stop at 29.59 for 100 shares of HIG. Do we put another order down here somewhere? Well, actually, this is the point when we start using a three-bar trailing stop on a different time frame. Remember, if we go back here, it says if second target is hit, change time frame from daily to weekly and use a three-bar trailing stop. So if we go over here, what we need to do now is change the time frame to weekly. And so go over here to our time frames and go to weekly. And let's get rid of this arrow here. And now that we're on the weekly chart, we can apply the three bar trailing stop to our uh, position here. As we can see, we can add all the bars that we want here. Um, for the week, it was a big down bar, and uh, and now we're painting a little bit of data down here. Uh, hopefully, it moves lower. So you can see if we're using a three-bar trailing stop, it's basically the high where it's the same spot we would have our our protective stop anyways right now. And even if this bar uh, finishes painting, and even if it goes lower, it's still going to be there. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a few weeks before the stop actually moves, but that's okay. Let's just put in our three-bar trailing stop. We go to Beck. We go to X-bar trailing stop, and we plop it in here. You notice it's exactly the same spot as where we, we thought it would be, so it's right there. We can even turn off the, uh, the targets now so they're irrelevant. Okay, so that's where our X-bar trailing stop is. And we're good to go. So hopefully this works uh, works out over the next few weeks. So that's our trade example one with HIG. So let's now look at another trade example, trade example number two.